All right, first up, we are starting with this wooden bunny cutout. I cut it on my laser machine and I it is on quarter inch wood. I added some score lines to the design to give it a little bit more dimension or, or texture. This bunny is about 18 inches tall. It won't stand on its own, but you could put holes in it if you wanted to hang it. I'm using it as a, like a shelf sitter, leaner. I'm using, I did give it a coat of paint, of white paint, just regular white paint, just as the base coat. And I am going to use milk paint in the color Bluebird by Sweet Pickens. And it comes in powder and you mix it half water, half powder, however much you think you're going to need. It doesn't keep or store, so you don't want to make a whole ton of it at once. You just want to make it kind of as you go. It's a very thin consistency of paint. You could thicken it up, I guess, with more powder, but if you use it as it's intended, it is intended to be a thin, thinner paint than say chalk paint or clay paint or even acrylic paint. It goes on very beautifully. You can use multiple coats, which I do in this. It is also intended to give you kind of a chippy look or a crackle look, I would say. It is not a full coverage paint unless you really want it to be. They do make something called Extra Bond that you can add to the paint to make it a more full coverage type of paint. I get this paint off of Jamie Ray Vintage. She has a local shop here where I live. She also has a YouTube channel. They ship, but any, I believe, store that carries sweet pickings, you could get this from. Now it is dry. I did use a heat gun to kind of bring out some of that crackle and chippiness look. And I took a little tool to score in the, to mark out those lines, to give them a deeper feel to them. Sometimes when you paint, those lines get filled up a little bit. So I just continue getting this all dried up and watching the magic happen. It's fun to watch. I am using a little bit of a sandpaper here just to scuff it up just a little bit more because that's how I do. I like things a little bit rough and that's the look I was going for for this little rustic bunny. I do seal it with some white wax and put a bow on her and look how beautiful. Now these are... The two, the egg and the little skinnier bunny are from Target. And this other one that I'm trying to get the tag off of is from Hobby Lobby. And spoiler alert, I never was able to get that tag off. These ones from Target came off beautifully. I am mixing up just a little bit of that Waverly wax with some water to lighten it up and thin it out. And I'm giving both of these little guys a good coat i'm doing the front and the back i am using all of these as almost two designs because i'm going to do one thing on one side and one thing on the other just to give myself some variety and some options um, one day i might feel like using it one way and one day i might feel like using it the other I do have kind of a theme that I've been going with is um, this black and white kind of theme mixed in with a little bit of pink and a little bit of blue, a lot of blue. And so I try to incorporate a lot of that. I got some stamps, two little stamp sets from Timu recently. And I was really excited they came in and I actually did a video to show everybody what things I ordered and got. And so I am going to make some use out of a lot of the little fun project or items that I got from Timu. This stamp set is one of them. 
I cut off the pieces and left the backers on them so that it would help me apply the stamp. I just grabbed my stamp pad. I did kind of play with them a little bit to see how I wanted to arrange them. I knew I wanted to use these flowers. And then I just dab on that ink pad. And they look really beautiful against this stained wood. So I just carry on keeping careful to wipe down some of the edges if I got paint on the areas that I didn't really want. And this isn't perfect. You can, you'll can you see, you know, I do end up kind of making a few little mistakes here and there. These, these stamps are really thin and um, light weight, you know, they bend. So they ended up being perfect for this little project though. And they were super inexpensive. Of course, as I said, they came from Timu and I just kept a baby wipe there next to me and kind of cleaned them off as I went and cleaned off any other little edges. This IOD ink pad, the ink is permanent. So once it's on, it's, it, you, it's not going to wipe off. And this is a little decal that I cut with my Cricut. I cut out, he is risen. Um, Matthew, whatever the, the scripture is, I don't recall it offhand. We'll see here in a minute. So I just got some, I, I did happen to use black because it was the good size. It's just a scrap piece. I'm actually going to stencil it though with that ink, which is why I have weeded it the way that I did. I guess they call it a backwards weed or, oh, I don't remember the name, guys. But you weed it a little bit differently. You weed out the part that you would normally keep if you're using this as a decal. I am using it as a stencil, as I said. So I got the transfer paper, lined everything up, or the transfer tape, I should say, lined everything up to where I thought it looked good and matched up. And I want to use the same ink because I felt like if I used regular paint, which normally I would have, it would have been so much darker and different looking than the stamp itself. And so I didn't want that. I wanted to keep it all the same. And so I got a little makeup sponge and stamped these stencils on and it actually worked really well. I hadn't done that before and it, it was really simple and it gave good coverage. I didn't have any bleeds. I just kind of pounced and pounced and dabbed and dabbed. I didn't rub a whole lot, but just to make it look consistent, I didn't want it to look splotchy either. And I should have probably taped off some of the areas because I did get a little bit of that ink in places that I didn't want to get it into. And just grab the weeding tool to get those little pieces weeded out of there. And then I do the same thing with this He Is Risen. I cut them separate because I wanted to be able to squeeze kind of that top of the S in after the H. You know, I just kind of wanted to nestle them together. And I thought this turned out really, really beautiful. Of course, I'm going to seal it up a little bit with some white wax, give it a little bit more dimension that way. And I love this white wax. It also is a DIY product and I also got this from that same shop I mentioned before, the Jamie Ray Vintage. She's also on YouTube, so you could check her out. And she's like an expert with, with all this stuff. So she has some really good information on how to use them, the best way, the what they're intended to be used for. And they have, her and her husband have a really, a really fun YouTube channel. They've been around for years. After that, I got this little sponge, circle, paintbrush, dabber, dabber. And I wanted to make these cute little polka dots. And I did like it. I ended up changing it, though, here in a minute. I, I decided I wanted 
one stained side of the egg and one colored. So I end up painting over this, as you can see here. I give this just a quick coat of white paint. And then I end up using that same blue milk paint that we used on the little bunny because I wanted everything to kind of coordinate. And I just sand it down. I'm wiping it down. You can um, also wet, what do they call it? Instead of sanding, you can use like a wet or a damp cloth to distress, wet distress, I guess is what they call it. And it works really, really well with this, this milk paint. Now I'm popping out my stamps again. This one is the little mushroom set. And again, I just kind of play around with them, see which ones I want to use, arrange them how I like, figure out what way is going to be best. And I wasn't sure if I was going to put something else on the egg at the top like I did on the other side. So I, I just fooled around, played around, changed my mind a few times over and over again. But again, this ink is permanent, so it's not coming off. You just have to repaint if you don't like something. And I just had already repainted this one as it was. So I was really trying to not repaint again. So I get my ink pad and get to it. Sometimes you just have to commit and just do it. Otherwise, you could sit there all day, or at least I could. I could sit there for an hour just staring at it, waiting for some bright idea. And oftentimes, I end up just using the original plan that I had to begin with. But here we are, and these mushrooms are so cute and so fun and just a different different look than I've never, I've never really used mushrooms in my decor but they sure are really fun looking and they definitely do remind me of spring, that's for sure. And then after I finished with this, I did decide to add those polka dots back in because I did like that look. I thought that was really, really cute and just, I love polka dots. That's kind of a thing that I do on a lot of different projects. So that was fun to incorporate it on this little egg and it's such flat wood that it's just really easy to do. So I get going on those polka dots again and I just randomly, I mean, try to do it a little bit randomly, but try to hang some off the side, some just sporadically, don't want too many. And I always end up doing too many, I swear. It's like, I always just add that one that I wish, oh, why did I do that one? And they were a little dark for what I wanted. And so I tried to tone them down a little bit. I end up getting a white ink pad out and do the same process to lighten them up. And that gave me the look that I wanted and that I was going for. And I did have to clean that white ink pad after. The white ink pad is from Amazon. It is not one of the IODs, but it works. So there we go. Isn't that cute? I love it. There it is sitting with a little bunny friend in both of the styles I went with, and it's adorable. There is the little bunny friend that you just saw. I All I did with this one, and I made, this one is not double-sided, I guess is what I'm trying to say. I just dry brushed it a little bit with some regular white paint and blended that in. And I used that like chiffon -y ribbon you can see next to me. I had to fool around with it quite a bit to give this cute little bunny a fun little bow. Just using a, a wet wipe to distress that a little bit and smooth it all out. And this, I just tied a regular bow. I mean, 
nothing, nothing too special. I just trimmed up the edges. I kind of fooled around with the length. I wasn't sure how long I wanted it to be. I twisted and turned it so that I could get it just right. And I think it's just beautiful and classic and so simple. I swear, some of these DIYs, I feel like I'm cheating. Those are just too easy. It's like, did I take the easy way out? Sometimes, sometimes it's best. Sometimes you don't have to busy everything up. And I tend to be one that does too much most of the time. But this one, I just kept very simple. And I think that it is just a good little piece of spring decor. It doesn't even have to just be Easter. So there she is in her same little spot. Now on to the little tiny bunnies. These came from a three pack from Target. And I let my kids paint a couple of them just for fun. And I told them they could paint them. And then my mom would just repaint them when she was ready to use them. So that's what I'm doing here. I'm just giving them just a plain white coat of paint to get rid of that color. And this one, again, is just going to be so easy. It's almost cheating. I am pulling out a paper pack from Hobby Lobby, some fun flowers, fun colors, and I get them traced and cut and get in those little nook and crannies. And I do scrapbook paper on one side and then I had the decoupage paper that I've been using in quite a few projects, which again goes along with that little theme that I was talking about. I I put glue on the wrong side. That's what my thumbs down was about. So I flipped it over. I don't usually use a glue stick to decoupage or, or apply scrapbook paper, but I have seen many people that do and, and rave about it. It worked. I wouldn't say it's necessarily any easier or better than just getting out Mod Podge, or I use a different product similar to Mod Podge, though. It did save me from having to get out a paintbrush, so there's that, and I hate washing paintbrushes. It worked. It did take, you know, it kept lifting, so I had to kind of reapply, readjust, reapply those edges in particular, I can't speak to the longevity of using the glue stick, but seemed to have worked just fine. I'm trimming up these little jagged edges and using some scissors to kind of get in between those ears, but also using the sandpaper. That's what works best when trying to get rid of these little edges when decoupaging. And don't they look cute together? I think they're adorable. This is the paper, the decoupage paper that I mentioned. I did the same exact process, traced both the bunnies out, and glued them on. I didn't show you that whole thing because you just watched me do it. Did the same thing, trimmed it up with some sandpaper, and they look adorable. Same exact process for this big Mama Jamma bunny. This one, again, was from Hobby Lobby, and I just do the decoupage on her front and the same process, only this time I'm using the Mod Podge medium. And it's actually not Mod Podge, but for the life of me, I cannot remember the name of what it is right now. I didn't hold it up to show it either, so my bad. But this, I just did the same thing little by little, just applying it, smoothing it down, trying to avoid as many wrinkles as I can. But the wrinkles don't bother me a whole lot if there are a few here and there. If they do bother you, I have seen techniques of using an iron or saran wrap um, to get those smoothed out. But as I said, they don't bother me. Now, I spent a good amount of time trying to get that dang tag off, more time than I would have ever liked to have spent and it never came off i didn't have any like goo gone or whatever i tried heat i tried scrubbing it i tried all the things so in the end i went with more scrapbook paper it tag was thick so even painting over it you'd see it but that's okay 
the scrapbook paper ended up being really cute. I just picked a really nice pink. It has some very light lettering on it that I don't know that you can see, just maybe a little bit. In fact, I can't even tell what it says because I'm blind and I can sit and look at it in person, but it's just very faint lettering. But it's just really, really pretty paper. That pack also came from Hobby Lobby. And then I'm going to decorate these two little girls up. I had some these, I think they're paper flowers or roses. I don't know what they are, but I had them from last year. So I just pulled a couple of those out. I gave her a cute little collar and a poofy tail. I'm using hot glue, hot glue to apply those. Now, this was stupid because I should have put the twine on before I glued the flowers, but that's not what I did. So now I'm kind of finagling the twine on uh, behind those flowers and it worked. It was just kind of a pain. Tied that off. I have these little tags that I cut for um, another Easter sign I did and I had one left over. So I just hurried and slapped a coat of that wax and water mixture and tied on this little Hello Spring tag for the finishing touch. And I think it turned out really cute. This was really easy, so easy. You don't have a tag like this, you could hang anything from her, even if little carrots would look cute. I didn't have any on me or here in my stash, so, but I did consider that. And then I got just a stray piece of this twine and tied up just a simple little like a shoestring bow and glued that on. And that is all we did for her, for this this little bunny guy or gal, however you see them. And that went right up on the shelf with all the others and looking very, very cute. We are so happy to have some fresh new decor in the house and enjoying the beauty of spring and everything spring brings although i will say it's still cold here still cold still raining bring on the warm weather but anyway y'all thanks so much for watching i hope you enjoyed please like and subscribe if you did and stick around for more diy videos and you all stay safe Thanks for watching. watching Molly Cool Creations. Click, Click on the like button and, and don't, don't forget, forget to subscribe and press, press the bell. <laughs> Bye. I'll see you in the next video. And don't forget to watch every single video we make.